We're here with Berkeley Sherman, and your camera woman today is Tanya March for our virtual tour of Portland. We're filming on Memorial Day weekend at the Van Port site. We're at the historic Van Port marker. In 1942, a housing project, which would have been the second largest city in Oregon, opened up. There were 40,000 residents here in the city by 1945. In 1948, at 4.17 p.m. on Memorial Day, a portion of the dike surrounding Vanport was broken. The Columbia River, swollen with early spring snowmelt, flowed quickly into Vanport. Floodwaters 15 feet deep washed Vanport away. Residents have been assured by authorities that the dikes were holding and that they would be warned in ample time to evacuate the break caught everyone including authorities by surprise. Thankfully, sloughs within Vanport absorbed the initial surge, allowing approximately 40 minutes for most people to flee Vanport to higher ground along Denver Avenue. Still, 18 people lost their lives in the flood. Within an overwhelming number of displaced people, private citizens took many Van Porters into their homes. Bitterness over the lack of proper warning by the authorities resulted in court cases. Ultimately, the courts decided the federal government could not be held responsible for a natural disaster. We are at the Trimax station around where Vanport. Well, it looks like it's just everyday items. So where were these everyday items found? Well, these everyday items were that like are found in Vanport of the people living there. Were they found in the 40s? No, in modern times by people who want to share the history. So these, we got a little matchbox car here. We've got some bottles. These are all things, a wrench that have come up through the mud after the flood. Look, we've got like a little, what is that, Donald Duck? No, I think that's Daisy Duck. Daisy Duck, I'm sorry, Daisy Duck. It was kind of, and they cast it and made it part of the railing here at the next station. There's some bike chain. Lots of little matchbox cars. Pepsi bottle. Mm -hmm. So if you're ever coming out this way, it's a, even not planning to come out quite this far, it's a good idea to get off of this Mac station and look at this memory of lives lost by people who couldn't get everything out from the flood. Remember those homes were temporary so they didn't have foundations. So when the flood waters came, the homes lifted up like boats. I've read interviews where people found their houses, everything's still intact, but the house had been turned around completely a 180. Okay, we've got a mosaic here on the ground. You know, an artistic rendering. It shows that yellow area is the racetrack that we just walked up to the fence of. And they've, let's get to the key so people can see the key. So we're looking here at the wetlands. This is a wildlife sanctuary. There's a lot of work here to restore the wetlands here in Delta Park. Thousand people, most of whom came to work during the war. 
in the defense housing. Once the war ended, single moms and African Americans got left behind and some of the housing was converted into veterans housing. Most students in Portland only learn about Vanport during third grade, during their Portland history unit. This is the textbook for third grade Portland history. It's called Portland, Our Community, a Children's Readings. And I was gonna read from an oral history that is here in this book. We have a story about a young woman who moved to Portland during World War II and she's interviewed by the authors because she lived through the Vanport flood in 1948. Miss Flowers says to the narrator, well let me tell you, at the time of the Vanport flood I was 13 years old and ready to get out of grade school. I had my beautiful outfit that mom had gotten me. We were looking forward to the most exciting time of our lives. I don't think we really believed that Vanport was going to flood until we began to see the water in the back of the sloughs, like the slough right behind me here. We would go up the embankment, you know, and look over there. We said, oh, that water is really high. Do you think this water's going to flood? We would talk in school about it. Is the water going to cross the dike? Ah, oh, no, no, no. You see, our parents did not talk to us about the possibility of a flood because they didn't want us to panic. Of course, you know, we kids are busy getting ready for graduation. We'd let our folks take care of the worries about the flood. The narrator asks Mrs. Flowers, where was the dike? Do you know where Kelly Park is? That's where the dike was. It was along the railroad tracks that go to Kelly Park. The water was coming in from the Columbia River and the Willamette River. They meet up towards Savvy Island, you know. Well, that dike wasn't big enough or strong enough to hold back all that water. And the water did not have an outlet. So where was it gonna go? To the lowest part. That low part was Vanport, where we lived. The water started rising in April and then May, all the way up to Memorial Day. The narrator asked Miss Flowers, where were you the day the dike broke? Miss Flowers responded, we were at home. I think my mother kept us close because my dad was not there. My grandmother was dying in Oklahoma. He was there. My brother Fred was at the Jansen Beach. His Boy Scout troop was helping sack bags to protect Jansen Beach from the flooding. The way we heard about the dike breaking was from the neighborhoods coming from the movie theater. The manager stopped the movie and said, children go home. The dike has broken. Go home swiftly. The kids were out of there. As they ran home, they yelled, the dike is broken. The dike is broken. We heard later that within 25 minutes, the movie theater was gone. Then we heard the warning siren. We had approximately 30 minutes to leave our home and get where we would be safe. My brother Horace got my dad's suitcase and threw things in it. My graduation dress was one. Mother's Oxfords and good shoes, change of clothing. I don't know how he did all this. Mother grabbed John, he was the youngest, and told me to start moving, so I did. We had to walk about half a mile to get to Denver Avenue. Horace had the suitcase. I held on to the tail of my mother's coat, and she had John Edward. The narrator asks, did your feet get wet? No, water did not touch us. We got up onto Denver Avenue. Today, guys, that's interstate. That's the road we took on that the Max Line runs along before we saw the water. It wasn't that far behind us, and by then, people were going to get out. That was the safest thing to do. My mother told us to stay together. She said, don't look back. Don't ever look back. But I had to look back because it was my home. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do another video at God's Lake because Miss Flores, like many victims of the Vanport flood, ended up moving into the only other housing project in Oregon that had African Americans anymore at that time. Fairview had had a few in trailer homes. Giles Lake Courts had had an African American community of 5,000, not a small community if you consider the Vanport community of African Americans was 6,000. Those displaced African Americans came into Portland when the federal law still allowed deed restrictions. So it was horrible timing and it was a tragedy that affected our community to this day. Thank you.